I put this video out yesterday. Finger of death underwater phenomenon in Antarctica. And the lovely, this is Walla, whatever that is, sorry, Wall, Wallong Sky Watch is Nim. And this is Nathan, like to say thank you very much for all the support from people like this. There's Lady Legs, there's loads of other people, Monique. Alan, they've been around me for years, so thanks very much, and thanks very much for this little video here, Nim. So, obviously, she said, Watch this link, so I did. <laughs> it's an article which is going to come up in a second. Thank you very much, there, Nim. Thank you, Nim. Yeah, Nim's been there from the beginning. Here it is. A massive freshwater river is flowing under the Antarctica ice. That's what she found. 285 mile stretch of water, of melt water, is, is longer than the Thames and could speed ice loss. Well, they've just noticed it, so it's not man doing it then, it's a natural thing. But anyway, that was the picture there. Under ice river which might be causing those fingers of death and they're saying basically it's ready till it comes up it says the scientists know the ice covering Antarctica is melting but they don't fully understand all the forces at play now they're making now they've made a surprising discovery that might help explain ice loss across parts of the massive continent the 285 mile long river causing underneath the ice. Hmm. They discovered this mysterious river, river by flying an aircraft over Antarctica to gather radar data, which they combined with models of how water would move on the continent. From the analysis, the team discovered that the hidden rivers at flows at three times the rate of the river in London, reports Wired Mart, Mart, Simon rather sorry ice covering the area as big as France and Germany combined from the east and west Antarctica ice sheets is slowly melting um, and contributing to water contributing water to the river very interesting that isn't it it's quite amazing that they're telling that to us now oh so it's not global warming, is it? But anyway, to find which the team shared in a paper published in Nature, whatever that is, Geosciences, late last month means the underside of Antarctica's ice has more active water flow than the scientists previously understood. This could make it more susceptible to human to human caused climate change. It isn't really, is it? But it's an underwater river. The region where the study is based holds enough ice to raise the sea level globally by 3.4 metres, 14 foot, says study coordinator Martin Siegert, a natural scientist at Imperial College London in England, in a statement, how much of this ice melts and how quickly is linked to how slippery the base of the ice is. The newly discovered river system could strongly influence the process. Hmm. Uh, just a few pictures, but interesting what they're saying, I suppose. But it isn't man doing it, is it? Well, no, man causes lots, but this looks more like a natural thing. What's your thought of that then? Do you think it's a natural thing, or do you think that it is more uh, a man made? They're saying. But then they're doing it to us, and then they blame us for it, even though they... Um, anyway, let's have a look at this one. They make us buy all the goods, but they're doing it. Anyway, Antarctica is remote, rugged, vast, making it extremely difficult to study. That's part of the reason why scientists haven't discovered the subglacial river already, but they also didn't expect to find one. In Greenland, for example, the warm summer temperatures melt ice from the tops, causing large amounts of water to flow from the surface and filter down through deep crevices. In Antarctica, however, the summers are colder and the ice surface doesn't melt much. Because of this, 
scientists assumed that there wouldn't be much water underneath the ice sheets. Instead, the re they revealed Antarctica's ice is melting from the bottom, caused by friction as it rubs against the land, as well as the natural geothermal heat from the earth. So what's the finger of death about? Because that freezes when those... I'm going to look at that again in a moment. Um, the scientists determined that the amount of melting ice is not huge, is not huge, no more than a few millimetres a year, but since the icy surface area is so large, even a millimetre of under of meltwater can add up to a massive, fast flowing river. Well, seawater is more salty and uh, stuff like that, so these columns come down and attach themselves to the floor and inside is cold running water. Sorry, the ice is the thing that's melted, the fresh water. And inside must be seawater, but I don't understand. They don't mix. And then this comes down and comes to the ground. And then whatever it touches, it freezes. But inside is running water, so it has to be the sea because this is frozen, this is frozen, inside isn't and that's not. So that's credible itself, isn't it? Oh, I've put the video on. Hang on. Hang on. Columns come down and you don't want to go anywhere near them. But if the icebergs are doing these naturally and attaching themselves to the floor, how can all the rest be happening? Like that video, like the article says. Let's go back to the article. So this article can't be right then with the fingers of death coming down. Well, nothing ever adds up, does it? But um, anyway, let's carry on. Because obviously, it's, it's, uh, let's get past that. It's all so many adverts. It's quite incredible, really, uh, how many adverts there are. Right, here we go. Stop it here. All the fresh rail turf flows into the Weedle Sea. Antarctica's ice sheets go from re resting on land to floating on water. This transition zone called the grounding line is especially vulnerable to warming temperatures. Understanding more about what it affects is affecting the sensitive region can help researchers develop more accurate models for estimating future sea level rise. Oh, it's always got to be rising, isn't it? In, you know, we know that things are maybe have been lower and yeah, all they talk about is it rising. But anyway, not talking about tsunami. Tsunami change mounds of water as well, if they're true. Um, in fact, the discovery of the river is its abundant flow of fresh water helps explain a puzzling mismatch between satellite measurements and the melting models. Satellites have suggested a greater amount of ice loss was occurring, and they were right. The paper adds a piece of the puzzle of understanding what's actually going on on the ground line, says. Pietro, Pietro Milio, oh, is that Milio? Uh, a uh, physicist at the University of Houston was not involved in the study, so to the wired. Finding the river then is a significant boost to scientists' overall understanding of Antarctica's subglacial hydro hydrology. This in turn means they can better predict how the scientists' ice sheets may behave if global warming continues unchecked. Oh my god, how is it unchecked? That's all they freaking talk about. Um, this discovery could be a missing link to our model, says the study, blah blah, a glaciologist at the University of Waterloo in Canada in a statement. We could be hugely underestimating how quickly the system would melt by not accounting for the influence of the river systems. Only by knowing why ice is being lost can we make models and predictions of the ice will react further under global, oh God, of course, they love that. To me, global means money. Heating and how much this could raise the sea levels. Right, well, they have to frighten us, don't they? But we already have a good feeling that in Antarctica, there was a civilization there until a certain period ago and there isn't there isn't now but people find buildings and pyramids and things there so it wasn't like that so something happened for it to turn into that 
But anyway, I think that's the last bit of the video. It's not the longest study. I think if we go down here, yeah, see it's the end. That is the end of that video. So I'd like to say thank you very much to Nim for all this. And how crazy that this goes against the finger of death. It's, that doesn't work with this. But anyway, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. What's your thoughts? Thank you very much, Nim. I thought I'd go and look up a little bit about Alaska and I put in there about the weirdest things found in Alaska and it comes up that these are scientists have found this dome shaped specimen it is sea life by the way well it's in the sea it's not that big it's only a few you know maybe as big as a hand um, but I just thought we'd look around so obviously deer wolf sheep the dogs, oh, I can't read it, it's going too fast, uh, humpback whales, oscars, grey whales, obviously it's known for the abora aura lights, but again, what are they, maybe that is them communicating and that's what it causes, um, it's those things, frequencies in the sky, but anyway, a bit more about, the, what, so it was the gold rush, second world war, 1741 or so, and they said they reached it, I was going to show you something else in a minute, and then of course Russia sold it, etc, etc there. Um, so under the ground they found this golden egg. It's two miles down, and there's a little bit of information there. So I filmed a little bit of footage because, you know, when you hear of dome-shaped structures under the sea, think of big things, but this thing wasn't actually that big. Um, and then you know the guy saying is it an egg it wasn't very hard so it's amazing it's all the way down there managed to survive all the currents of the sea but they tried to pick it up and they broke the skin but that's in the next little bit of video um, I think this was found last year it's amazing all these things don't go across the news and we hear about all these things they just want to keep us stuck on the walls and everything it's not really news then is it this is more news but anyway that's what it looks like strange looking thing isn't it and uh, a little bit more information there and now we're going to listen to the little video it's not that exciting but anyway let's go Snap Jim, please. Okay, snapping. Hmm. Is this some sort of encrusting sponge? Uh, I don't know what to make of that. Wanna go tight on the opening? Sure. Let's see what's in there. Stabilizing, stabilizing. Interesting. I don't know what this is. I'm not sure. It's like oh, we're seeing in the chat a dead sponge attachment. Oh. Might have made a home out of it. Huh. Which kind of makes sense why I didn't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> it seems spongy. Okay, lasers are going on. But now, now I'm seeing potential egg case. The bugs are still on. Okay, let's give it a little tickle. Oops, soft. Uh, soft thermal air. Okay. Hmm. I'm not sure if yeah. it'll just fall apart if I try to grab it. It seems like it. It seems pretty delicate. Sure, okay. <laughs> as long as it's sterile, usually so you get away with it. If it's in, uh, was in a small yeah, amount of ethanol. I need to <laughs> turn it off. Off. Oh. Yeah, stand by. Well, I did put in, didn't I? What are the weirdest things seen over or in Alaska? So this is what it's showing me. So this little video happens, I mean we all know what that looks like, better not mention it because we get a strike or get taken off, but uh, they're in our skies, but you can't talk about them. But um, anyway, some people said uh, maybe this was, you know, a UFO, and it is strange that there in it you could see this disc, whether that's, or whatever that is, whether that's a plane. Uh, but I mean, look at all this coming off of it. What the hell is that? And it wouldn't be going straight down, would it? And you know, I've been doing a lot about stars and orbs lately in my footage in my plane trip, the stars, 
these things can move quite quick when they have to. Anyway, I mean, it is strange, isn't it? It looks like a little, they're bringing a big sort of dot, uh, what do you call it, a pearl back or something. But again, that looks like an orb. Anyway, these were some of the places in, and then that one looks a bit strange. And Igloo City Castle in um, Alaska. And that place, oh, this is it, this is the place. This is just so interesting because I've just told you back, um, let's go back. Um, that here they're saying that the outsiders reached Alaska by 1742. But when we're looking at this one, do you see that? What it's actually saying is a museum down here at the bottom, this one down here, a museum devoted entirely to hammers has more than 1,400 items on display dating back to the Romans. So it couldn't have been founded in 1741. The Romans had been there and people had been there before that, after that, whatever, you know, crazy or what. But anyway, let's carry on. Just those little anomalies you see, and they don't care, do they, Google, that someone's saying this and someone's saying that. It doesn't matter as long as we get the wrong information. And, um, but you say anything on YouTube, that's it, strike them, strike them down. Um, yeah, there's a good picture of whatever that is, but you still can't make it out, can you? But you just look at it. What the hell is that? looks like one of those things that we see quite often but it is going straight down and you know it isn't the first time we've seen this kind of thing but it is in Alaska here it comes it's going down 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 and then what it was is this person used a bit of footage of an aeroplane I can't believe it it's got orbs in it. Orbs fly around the sun. There are orbs here. Whether they're electricity orbs, because they don't want you to know, but we are an electric universe, aren't we? So maybe these are all electricity going off. But do you see the orbs? And in the first footage, I see this one here, but it's over here on the second one. That's a bit bizarre, but anyway. So we're just playing it because obviously even though we're in the middle of nowhere, one of the, like, the last state before nothing, uh, people captured it, said there was an aeroplane flying around and wondered whether that aeroplane had caused this trail to come down like this. Probably, because they seeded or something, didn't they? Whatever. Well, so another plane seeded, but there's one there. There's two more coming up under the plane. One. and there's one down there but that one appears further along on the other footage but there's this trail it's leaving so that's all a bit crazy isn't it anyway I thought I'd make this little video of a few anomalies seen in Alaska and I'm going to look up whether they have found any star forts there I just want to check that but if there's nothing about star forts afterwards, they didn't. And if there is, then there are star forts there. So saying 1741 is a bit stupid, really. I suppose it has to marry into uh, the constitution to the UK in the 1700s. You know, the 4th of July. Anyway, I found these pictures. These are some more pictures from Alaska. I mean, that one's crazy and that one's crazy. And I mean, that one's pretty crazy, isn't it? Pretty looks a bit like a spider, doesn't it? That one's crazy. All those pictures are pretty crazy, to be honest. So these are the lights, the Ouroboros, whatever you have say it, um, over, it, um, over Alaska. Look at the, what my understanding is that Basically, everything is a frequency, isn't it? So these are the frequencies. And then this is short wave, and the darker one is long wave. That's the same as a rainbow. And then when you look at these lights in here, which, which one do you reckon the pinks are from the blues, or do you think they're the yellows and reds? Because it's got yellow in it. So that's infrared or gamma rays. This is what's in the sky. 
I think it's how they communicate with each other because obviously there's more land and you know I've seen it with um, over um, Stonehenge it was uh, red the skies were red so that was up there in the sort of radar and all that look at the colors in them that is them using the skies to communicate i reckon and that's what you're seeing so they tell us it's those things but and maybe some of it is naturally but most of it's them i reckon yeah look that's all over people's heads with our friend up there the spiral look at those colors lots of greens and yellows reds and pinks bits of blue greens Yeah, anyway, I thought that was interesting to repeat that. I've told you this before. This what I reckon is that when we're looking at the colour spectrum there, which is the same as a rainbow, those are frequencies and that's what's in the sky. And of course, the lights at night with the spirals. There you go. So obviously the thing coming down out of the sky wasn't anything exceptional then was it because look what they can do look at it what is that thing oh and that thing also is in the water it's my dog doing that shut up floss she's scratching herself as usual but what they're saying is that it moves in the sea but it's not a Loch Ness but I have, I'm going to look that one up as well we'll see a little bit about that I wasn't actually looking for this at all. What it is is my daughter likes Love Island and she also likes Made in Chelsea. I have watched a bit of Made in Chelsea. It helped me forget things a bit, but I know it's kind of fake. And it's just, I've seen other people playing other people. They look very similar to them. Why would they? But what it was is there's this girl. Um, her name is Annabella. Chai. She's supposed to be a model, but she looks very, very, very similar to uh, Bella Sharp from Made in Chelsea. I'm sorry, this is the amount of videos it took to make this little video, and this one will be another one. So, uh, but anyway, I had to make it once I saw it. I know YouTube don't like it, but when you see it, you see it, don't you? So, just showing you how alike they are. To be honest with you, I actually have been hearing some things. In what sense? That you're planning on having a boy summer and being single and doing things without me. Well, it's not the first time that this has come up. I just think you've been thinking about yourself and you've Bella been thinking, has been 
thinking about yourself, yourself first completely. too. Okay. Like totally and utterly fine. thinking about yourself, fine. which is fine because it's clearly how you are and I won't. Treat to know who's coming up because I have actually no idea. Is anyone completely coupled off? You're, you're not even taking it into account. You're just like, Better. oh, yeah, fine, draw a line. Let's Girls, be honest, you don't see anything coming from this. Be honest. At the moment, I don't, I don't see that you would be my girlfriend. No. Okay, fine. Well, then... Yeah. Fill you in. Yeah. Because I feel like it's a good fragrance. opportunity, especially when the girls aren't here, because I do know what it's like when obviously yeah. the girls are here, so I feel like everyone needs to... Tell me the situation. I feel like everybody is just single. OK, that's good to know. He's Are you a little bit shocked to see me? <laughs> <laughs> Chance of you and Toby rekindling? I do feel like there were definitely conversations. I don't want to be here in, in six months where it's still the same situation. I know, but I think the dynamics change now between you and I. I don't know. I don't want to lose you, but yeah, I, to be honest, I actually need to digest. I don't know what the girls are saying right now. That's yeah. what I'm They're talking about you. I would love to be a fly on the wall. <laughs>